guys, Constant Angler here. I'd like to talk to you about um, walking frogs that I use for um, pike fishing here in the UK. So, what are they? Well, let's get one of the biggest ones here. They're basically hollow bodied, soft, hollow bodied, weedless lures that we can work across the surface because they float um, and chuck into areas that we wouldn't be able to throw our traditional hard bodied surface lures that we're uh, trying to imitate some sort of frog or bait fish don't get hooked up on the frog thing although these things do really look like frogs if you look at some of them some of them are more, sometimes I think we're representing uh, shads and bait fish more why walking frogs well if you've heard of the term if you fished for surface lures before you've heard of the term uh, walk the dog what we're trying to do not all the time but this is why they're called walking lures um, we're trying to walk the dog, which is basically tapping your rod tip and winding in a stuttering fashion to get the lure to go from side to side, a bit like you would with a jerk bait. Um, that action drives fish crazy. It comes from the American bass fishing circuit, and we've adapted it and brought it into pike fishing. That is difficult to do though with um, with our wire traces that we use here in the UK, I must admit. So uh, it takes a lot of practice doesn't always work with all lures different lures do it easier this is an Abu tormentor and it has you can see quite a wide keel uh, bulbous body and that is quite that is easier than some of the others to do it's the keel of the bait if you look at the this one here you can see it's, it's like the bottom of a boat isn't it the belly and that enables you to uh, walk the dog with these lures uh, size wise well I wouldn't use anything less than 65 millimeters. Yeah, no less than 65 millimeters. And with that, I'm talking about the length of the body, not the length of the body and the skirt, because you'll find you get a lure that's 65 millimeters and the body's only half of that and it's a smaller. This is a smaller lure. This is about a 55 millimeter lure. This is a cheap AliExpress special. I'd leave those kind of things for chub and perch. Um, I'm not saying they won't catch pike, but generally we use 65 millimeters and above. Uh, if you look at this Spro Bronze-Eyed King Daddy, this is 90 mils. Quite a big difference. One of the only bigger frogs you can buy. I certainly haven't found anything else. Um, so, let's show you a few of these. So let's start off with this Spro King Daddy and Leopard pattern. It's got 6.0 hooks on it. It weighs 28 grams. Its body is 90 millimeters long and it has a skirt on it to match. Most of these frogs have skirts like this, not all, but most of them have a double skirt like that which runs through the back of the body of the frog. It's hollow bodied, so you might be able to hear when I squeeze it, air comes out of it, that's what keeps it afloat, and it's soft bodied, so we need a soft bodied frog. We don't want something hard bodied because the fish, as they bite on it, won't be able to depress and expose the hooks so easily. And they come with a little eyelet at the front there. <clears throat> Another of my favourites is the Booyah Pad Crasher. This is quite a nice lure to work. You can see I've got it in white here. I do have it in other colours, black and things like that. Um, yeah, it's a reasonable size. It's not a big frog, but it's big enough. Another one I use is this Savage Gear 3D frog. A walking frog, even. Yeah, nice lure, very soft bodied, good strong hooks, sharp, very sticky sharp hooks. I um, have an Abu Tormentor here which I've imported, uh, as I said they're lovely to uh, use, they, they really are quite easy to get to walk on the surface. Um, probably one of the most recognised in this country and, and, and other parts of the world is the Copper's Live Target here. Uh, very good lure, sharp hooks, good size, really represents a, a frog or a toad there, um, quite a deep bodied lure um, yeah very realistic um, the live targets are very realistic lures um, these lures here they last some of these other lures um, such as well I found so far the savage gear um, you know catch a few pike on them and they do rip I'm not saying the live target doesn't it just doesn't seem to rip as easier but it's dearer you're probably looking at about 20 pounds for that lure there 
Whereas the Savage gear are coming in around seven, eight pounds. These are very easy to source, so it swings and roundabouts. These work, um, and you can uh, melt the the tears, glue the tears, get them working again, stick some silicone in any holes that have appeared. Um, so there are ways around it. It's it's cost cost benefit analysis, isn't it? Um, if these are readily available and they catch you a few pipe before they're they're no good. I'd pay that, but I have paid that. Um, talking of the Copper's Live Target, this is your alongside your cheaper on my left AliExpress copy. You can see it's, the detail is not as good, but I mean it's good enough they work. Now they are a cheaper plastic, very soft, which is a good thing. I find you get good hookups on these. Um, but I can pick up four of these, these three here, the black one, the, the green one for about 12 pounds whereas i'm saying i'm paying i don't know 15 pounds if i'm lucky 20 pounds for one of these it all depends what you want and you know i get more selection of colors with those so you know weigh it up see what you think um and this one's another one from aliexpress i don't know what company nice and soft again like i say but it'll probably get shredded it's just a color i i, I like the look of and thought i'd give a whirl so talking of color when do we use what well darker lures, black lures, are using low light conditions when it's overcast um, there's little light available whether there's some colour in the water or something like that. Um, I find them early in the morning, foggy days, um, in the evening, low light conditions. Then we move to our more natural colours like the Coppers Live Target here. These are used when it's bright and sunny and the fish are going to get a good look at the lure. You want something that imitates the frog or the bait fish or whatever it is that you're trying to imitate. Um, they're probably less likely to take in those conditions. So you want something quite realistic. Uh, shad color lures. I use shad color lures when I'm trying to imitate bait fish. Usually or in clear water, deep conditions. I'm trying to imitate the bait fish anyway. Um, very good in the evenings when all the little bait fish come up to the surface and the pike are actively hunting in the surface layers. Uh, dummy proud, shad colors then. Uh, white lures. These tend to work in any conditions, to be honest. They're quite a universal one, or at least that's what I've found. Um, you know, we're not always talking about the color of the back of the lures. Maybe we should be having a conversation more about the colour of the belly of the lure. So if you look at some of these I have here, uh, your white belly is typical. It's a leopard belly on the King Daddy, white and citrus. Or that's a white belly, black back lure. Um, if I could do with a black body lure, which I use in the light, low light conditions, they'll see it more. It will silhouette more. Um, white probably shows better better in uh, moonlight I think don't know don't quote me on that but yeah you can get different colored bellies as well so you're not always talking just about the overall color of the lure sometimes it's more important the color of the belly of the lure so retrieves what we're we looking to do well I've, I've mentioned walking the dog you don't have to do that if you're finding it difficult with the lure a straight retrieve where you're creating a wake behind uh, work sometimes add in some pauses and start again you can skip them along pull them along um, play around you want to find a sort of uh, retrieve and cadence so by that I mean and speed and uh, movement of the bait that works on the day keep experimenting you just wind these straight back in and pipe will have them so don't be worried about get too stuck on retrieves of these lures for one thing i will say is when you first cast make sure you um allow the bait to sit for about five seconds and the rings to dissipate uh, this will give fish time to actually locate that lure if after five seconds nothing's happened then give a couple of twitches and leave again nothing happens then then start your retrieve in the normal manner we're looking to cast these into weed beds onto mats if we're talking about baits for big mats you know this is going to have more presence push down the weed further than some of the smaller baits so you're looking it's, uh, to see if that will make a difference and uh, size and weight of the bait will will obviously influence that 
Uh, we're also looking to chuck in holes, gaps in lily, lily pads, that kind of thing, along reed lines. Anywhere you fancy a fish might be sat, you can fish these baits in open water. Don't think that you can't. Uh, the hooks, they're big, thick efforts. This is a size 6.0 on the Spro King Daddy. They're thick wired, um, typically sort of 3.0 on the others. Uh, consequently, you're going to need a big, strong rod to set those hooks. So you can use your normal piking gear that we use here in the UK. That will do the job. Um, I currently use a Savage Gear MPP, the original one, the green one, uh, greater than 100 gram rod. Um, it's beefy enough without it being too beefy and I can get fish in our weed beds and I can set the hooks nicely into the mouths of the fish. So whilst we're talking about setting hooks or striking, the thing you want to do is wait until you feel the weight of the fish. Don't strike at the splash. I know it's very, very difficult. You will do it lots of times. i telling you this and I will do it from time to time. If we're looking at um, hooks here, if you see on the Spro King Daddy, I haven't adjusted these yet. Uh, I'll tell a lie, I have a bit. They're pointing up at about 30 to 45 degrees. This helps you set the hook. You have to bend that with the pliers, but it will increase your hookups. If you look at the River of the Sea one there, if I put it alongside it, um, you can see that I haven't done that yet with this. It's still pointing well, slightly down actually. You want sticky sharp hooks as well. So watch the hook points when you do that. You can even pull them out a bit from the sides, um, but it's a compromise between how many more fish you're hooking and whether you can fish it in the environment you're chucking it in without snagging too much weed. Um, we'll go on to line now. I use braid, nothing less than 55 50 pound braid good quality is better than cheap because it will be thinner so it will aid you with your casting distance trace i would recommend your wire that you normally use um, in a minimum of uh, 40 pounds but you can use your standard wires you use normally for lure fishing so higher than 40 pounds i like a length of at least 12 inches preferably 18 inches um, you can use wires such as Kahira or I use a trace made by Kamatsu Wolfram. I'll put a link in the description below. Uh, it's a titanium trace that you can buy online on eBay. Uh, reels, use your standard pike reels. You need the guts, you need the torque and you need the drag. They're the things you need to concentrate on. So we're not so concerned about high speed reels, we're concerned about powerful reels that'll get those fish out of the weed and get them on the bank. If they're in open water, then you're fine. You don't have to worry so much, but you need to get them out of the weed in the first place. When you're talking about rods, we could be using um, American frog rods, but bass don't grow as large as our UK pike. And I would recommend upping it a bit more to one of the pitching sticks. You want a heavy, fast action bait caster. And, uh, you know, we're fishing, we're, we're talking about looking after these fish that we're trying to catch. You don't want to be pussyfooting around getting a pike stuck in a wee bed and you considering swimming to free it and maybe having an accident yourself. So, <clears throat> yeah, good strong rods and reels, things like your Tranks, your Komodo, your Citrix. I use a Spartacus Maximus that has 25 pounds worth of drag. I mentioned striking already, how we do that. So when you strike, strike upwards and strike when you feel the weight of the fish. Um, other than that, that's that's about it. That's what I do with these. I will do a video hopefully at some point if we all get back out on the bank, um, showing you how, hopefully showing you some pike with these lures in front of me. Um, you can buy lots of other different types of uh, frog lures. Um, some I can talk about are, uh, this is one I love, it's a bit different, not a lot of other people are doing this, uh, not in the UK anyway, this is a live target sunfish, it's a hollow body floating lure, same as your, your frogs, but as you can see, it's like a little bait fish that's curved, it sits on the surface and recommends, uh, sorry, represents a uh, dying or injured bait fish, these are really easy to get to do whatever you want, walk the dog, do what you like, lovely sharp hooks, um, and you can hear in this one, I popped a little split shot in this one and give it a bit of a rattle, that's something you can do with any of these frogs here, you basically slip it in 
the gap there where the weight is um, with all these frogs after a while they get some water in them you squeeze them and the water comes out the back where you can hear the air coming out of so that's the copper's live target sunfish expensive but like the frog live target frog they tend to last so they're worth the money you might have to import them I don't know if anyone in the UK does them at the minute I did import that um, another one I have is the um, Western hollow bodied shad I think it's called basically they've taken the colors of the jerk baits and turned them into a hollow bodied shad as you see it's quite slender I'm not sure about this one yet because it has quite uh, narrow gaped hooks on it um, they're not quite as wide as on the other frogs I have I hope that will affect the hooking potential I have elevated these considerably I might pull them out a bit wider we'll see I'll try them as I've got them at the minute but they were set in these little recesses so very weedless and you can see a single skirt here at the back but across down and exposed I reckon they'll work I like the look of them Western make good baits something different again to maybe what everyone else is doing I have another one here this is where I'll need your help because I couldn't find it I bought it so long ago and forgot about it hadn't been you can see what I've done with the hooks again there it looks like some sort of slug to me in a frog color I think it's made by Lunker Hunt not sure about that but we'll let you know but you could stick a split shot something like that inside to give it a rattle if you want um, so yeah thanks for watching as always look after yourself stay safe in these troubled times and um, yeah, watch a lot of YouTube videos mine preferably um, and I will get out on the bank at some point as we all will with far too many lures because we got uh, cabin fever and uh, hopefully lots of time to do this uh, thanks again as always please like and subscribe constant angle